Thank you, Madam Chair. Today, the Health Subcommittee continues its bipartisan work to improve health outcomes and health care coverage. Our first panel will examine three bills to improve health outcomes for babies and children. The first bill, H.R. 2271, the Scarlet Sunshine on Sudden Unexpected Death Act, will improve investigations, data collection, surveillance, and research into sudden unexpected infant death and sudden unexpected death in childhood. It also includes a critical support for families who face these unimaginable tragedies. As the author of the Sudden Unexpected Death Data Enhancement and Awareness Act, which was signed into law by President Obama in 2014, I've long supported this cause, and I'm glad we're taking further steps today. The subcommittee will also examine H.R. 4801, the Healthy Start Reauthorization Act, which will enhance programs that support perinatal health, reduce infant mortality, and improve long-term health outcomes. Despite serving communities that have much higher rates of infant mortality, Healthy Start grantees have shown their ability to bring their community's overall infant mortality rate below the national average, demonstrating the program's success and the need to expand and strengthen it. In rounding out the first panel, the subcommittee will review H.R. 2468, the School-Based Allergies and Asthma Management Program Act, a bill that will provide incentives for schools to help prevent and treat asthma and allergy-related emergencies. Now, on our second panel, we'll examine four bills that improve health insurance coverage. H.R. 2477, the Benny's Act, will provide individuals approaching Medicare eligibility with critical information about the Medicare enrollment process. This common sense notice will empower people to make better choices about their health care coverage and avoid costly lifetime late enrollment penalties, and it will also eliminate harmful gaps in Medicare coverage. We'll also discuss H.R. 5534, the Comprehensive Immunosuppressive Drug Coverage for Kidney Transplant Patients Act. This bill removes the 36-month limit on Medicare coverage of immunosuppressive drugs after a kidney transplant surgery. Those who are fortunate enough to receive a kidney transplant rely on this medication for the rest of their lives, so it's important that Medicare offers the coverage necessary to protect the incredible gift of life uh, that a transplant brings. We also discuss H.R. 1379, the Ensuring Lasting Smiles Act, which requires all individual and group market health plans to cover medically necessary treatment resulting from congenital abnormalities. About 3% of American children are born with congenital abnormalities or birth defects that affect the way they look, develop, or function, and often for the rest of their lives. So these children require serious medical treatment that is often not covered by health plans, either because it's deemed cosmetic or because the treatment involves dental services. However, this treatment is critically important and medically necessary, particularly for children with serious dental, dental anomalies. Our witness today, Kevin Kozer, will tell us about his family's long-standing struggles to get his son Cannon's medical treatment covered, and H.R. 1379 would ensure that children like Cannon get the treatment they need. And finally, we'll consider H.R. 3935, the Protecting Patients Transportation to Care Act, which will ensure that some of the most vulnerable Americans will continue to be able to access the care they need through Medicaid, regardless of where they live. These, make, these bills make important strides to improving health outcomes and health coverage. I agree with the uh, Chairwoman Eshoo who said that these are a, this a, a, a group of very common sense, rational yeah, <laughs> proposals, and I look forward to the witnesses' testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back.